subtle, dainty, opal-like nail art with dainty rings using Japanese gel. Hey there and welcome back and if you are new here, welcome. My name is Paola of paolaponsanails.com, your source for all things premium soft gels and entrepreneurship in the nail industry. If this sounds like a niche you'd like to continue growing in, then at the end of this video, do consider subscribing to this channel and our weekly newsletter. Let's begin. So I've already structured my nails, so I've applied my foundation, and now I want to remove the shine. So I don't wanna do all the buffing and all the prepping and all of that, so I'm just actually gonna melt the top layer just a little bit. I mean, it's not really gonna melt off, but I'm gonna use acetone instead of alcohol to kind of remove the shine a little bit from my gels so that they can adhere. Now, this doesn't, do it completely matte right but it's just enough for the next layer of gel to adhere because if you don't know gels don't adhere to shiny surfaces or high shine surfaces so that's what i did there so i'm going to use this color and really this color is where all the inspiration for this nail look comes because if you look at the pot doesn't it look like opaly blue and i just thought Ooh, what if we made like opal like gels or gel nails to uh you know these structure overlays with the flakes and all of that and of course i was like i don't know exactly how i'm gonna create the opal but as long as i get opal feels like i can actually see through the gel and i get all the iridescence i'll be okay so that's what we're working on today so i'm gonna go ahead and apply two coats of this gel um actually you know what i'm gonna do one i I ended up doing just one because i was afraid that it was gonna be too blue and not only that i'm gonna be layering so when you're layering you kind of want to start thin and so yeah i only did one coat so once i'm done applying these i'm gonna go ahead and fully cure All right, so now that we're back from the lamp and that beautiful color from Vetro was 494, it's a newly released color. And again, it's probably gonna be a favorite for a long time. Okay, the next color I'm gonna do is 270 by Cocoa's Warmish Sheer Ivory. Now you can also use Lychee Nude um, or Lychee Nude if you know me here in the channel. That's one of my favorite colors by Cocoa's. But either way, I'm also going to grab a Geha's um, little orange, I forgot what it's called, but it was it's not a magnet powder. It's like a holographic type powder. And um, it's from her like candy collection. I'm not sure. I just really like the orange. It's the only one I got because I it made me think of the fire underneath the opal so that's what we're gonna do and also I got the iridescent flakes from leaf gel now there's a whole different like set of these that you can get from leaf gels um they all kind of do the same and they all carry somewhat the same hues and really unless they're all in one little jar like they are there to me, honestly, after a while, they all look the same. So just grab whatever you're gonna grab, okay? Do not feel committed to this specific color, or if you're gonna use another brand, that's fine too. The goal here is to get something iridescent and also to catch a little bit of that fire in an oval with some sort of like orange glitter or holographic glitter like that agaha powder that I pressed in there. Now, I don't have any gel other than the one that we cured earlier on my nails. And so I'm using the tacky layer of that to just press on these two products here. The other thing that I did or skip on was my ring finger. I did not overload my ring finger and my thumb because I'm actually going to be doing something super fun like ring nail art. Ring nail art is like become my absolute favorite it does take a little bit more to create and i used to like putting things on my nails like crystals and charms and things but really since that thick boba gel from cocoa's came out like i've kind of been obsessed with ring nail art and things like that so i actually created a whole course on ring nail art and it should be debuting by the time you are watching this video so if you want to sign up and get into that course you're going to have lifetime access to it the link for that is going to be down in the description box below and i am so excited because uh it was something that i really put a lot of heart to and also i got to collaborate with one of my students from italy to put this course together for you so yeah get it with that link in the description box below all right we're going to continue on and the goal here is to start kind of overlaying and in japanese now our technique this is called like nuance basically making like 
um, not random marbling, but kind of, <laughs> and making a design out of just combining things. And I don't wanna say randomness because that just sounds kind of all over the place, but there's no real technique other than being soft, taking it little by little, blending, kind of marbling, layering, all of that is nuance. So just kind of soft abstract. So I'm going to come in back with my orange again, a powder just to kind of light up that uh, opal, right? We're pretending these are going to be like opal nails. Um, and yeah, just a little here, a little there. Don't overdo it. It is so easy to overdo it with both of these products, but specifically the flakes. I've definitely done things with these flakes that I didn't intend to do and that I didn't necessarily enjoy and that make me just feel like meh and so the beautiful thing here is that not only am I taking my time to apply these but I'm also going to put a little bit of white over them to tone them down because I don't necessarily want that metallic reflective effect like it's really pretty it's subtle enough, but again, I want to tone it down and I'm actually going to be doing another layer. Now I'm going to be doing that layer and I'm not going to be thorough. I'm going to be doing it more on some nails than others and on another nail or two. I'm just going to kind of like patch it, blot it, blop it, <laughs> subtle, um, you know, just here and there, not everywhere. So just watch and see, and you can definitely do however much you want but my goal here is to soften those metallic papers on the bottom and for that orange to kind of come through the design also so again you do you just watch here and then you'll see me incorporate art clear zero and art clear zero is basically the clear foundation color from cocoist to all of their gel colors it's like the best way to explain it it's like a clear color gel so it's like the clear foundation to their color gel okay so I'm gonna go ahead and cure this and then I'm gonna add that white or that sheer ivory, that 270. And then again, you'll be seeing me add the Art Clear Zero. So that you, you can see here that when I do a second coat of that bluey white that we started with from Vetro, I think it was 424, like it doesn't, it still looks kind of white. So it's beautiful. I, over time have just really like sheer colors a lot especially ones that are like a little bit of white base okay i'll be quiet enjoy <laughs> Okay, after I've cured that, it's time to bring out the boba gel. If you don't know, boba gel is like a, I, I can't even say high viscosity. It's basically because it's just like ultra mega super high viscosity. It doesn't really go anywhere. Um, so it's like solid gel and you can roll it. You can color it like I am right here with the chrome powder. You can kind of mold it. Um, it it's really cool. You're going to see me use it here in this technique. Um, I'm not going to show you the exact step by step because this is reserved for a lesson in our nail art course, which again, description box is where you can find that link. But basically I'll tell you what it is. <laughs> so it's this big putty gel, thick putty gel that you can mold and whatnot. The key here is to get it really, really thin. There's a secret step. And then you saw me put the pigment on there. Okay. And then look at that. I tied it in to a knot and then I'm going to press it on to the nail. Now, depending if the nail already has stickiness, you can just cure it and it should cure on the nail. And then you can kind of attach it with a little bit more gel, but let's just say that it's kind of popping up or it's not cure, uh, like attaching to the gel, right? Because maybe it's a little over cured. What you can do is put in a little bit of base gel on the bottom and then cure it. Notice I have my flash curing unit there to my left. And then once it's solid enough, you can actually nip the excess. Now, I really like this dainty ring. Like I've been staring at it since I got it done on myself. I also went ahead and did the same thing on my thumb. Um, and um, you're gonna see me actually make this a little bit smaller because it was a little too big. You kind of couldn't really tell what it was. And yes, um, 
I'm just kind of obsessed right now with ring nail art, especially because I've been working on this course for a couple weeks now. And so now it's like ready to be published and ready to go out into the world. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be at a nail show very soon and I'm looking forward <laughs> to just doing nail art demos with ring nail art. It's kind of funny. Okay. If you don't know about Cocoa's non-wipe accessory bond, then you need to know about it. Okay. First of all, it holds charms and crystals and things like that. Like nobody's business. It holds it down so solid with just a little bit. I mean, you still have to be a little bit generous, but it holds tight for like ever whenever you're ready to remove your nails. Okay. So as you can see, I'm adjusting the ring. So it's a little bit smaller, a little bit more manageable. Um, it's very important to have flash care unit here because this is actually not fully cured. My little ring, you're supposed to cure the boba gel for two minutes. So it's not cured two minutes. Okay. It's under cured. So it can be a little bit moldable, a little pliable so that it can conform to the shape of the nail. And what you see me doing now is taking that non-wipe accessory bond and attaching the ring further so that it has more of a permanent hold, okay? If you just leave the ring with the sticky layer that's left behind from the color, that's not gonna be enough hold. And then remember, you put pigment on the ring, so that's also going to inhibit it from curing, like, not all the way, but curing fast. So it's gonna take a long time. And I also did my ring kind of semi-translucent so that it can cure properly. And then once it does cure for at least two minutes, then I'm going to actually retouch it with some of that um, chrome pigment. So super fun, super exciting. Uh, you're gonna see me add a little opal to this ring and I still have it on and I will be wearing this manicure until it falls off, <laughs> which can be like six months, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, maybe three weeks. All right, I'll be quiet for now. Enjoy. Okay, I'm gonna use one of my favorite products from Cocoa's like ever. I've been following Cocoa's for about 20, since 27, 2016 at least, maybe 2017. And um, one of the things that attracted me to their products was this opal gel, AKA gem gel. They used to have six colors. I think they're down to four now, but all you need is this one. Look at this, look at that orangey fire. So when I was first starting with this design, I told you I wanted to capture that orangey fire in an opal. And if you can see it here in this gel, those little orange specks, that's what I meant. Like how beautiful. So at first I thought I was going to make like a little dollop and leave it there. But then I was like, you know what? Why not fill this ring with this gel? Um, it's so beautiful. I'm sure I'm going to be staring at it like for a very, very long time. And this is like real opal. So when you wear this gel, you are going to admire it. Like if it was a real piece of opal, no, el opal ring art, like it's just so precious, so beautiful. So, um, there's four colors. Again, this is my favorite one because it's a little, little bit more universal. And in fact, you can even add color in there if you wanted to. Okay, now it's time to seal things. Um, a non-wipe top coat is obviously what you want at the very end that you have finished your design. Once you finish your design, what I like to do for long wear, but I guess I didn't do it for here, but, and it's still wearing very well, 
is to actually um, use a little bit of base first and then do the non-wipe top. But I'm looking at it right now and it's been on my nail for a few days now, maybe five, seven days. And it's still holding strong just with that top coat. So it worked for me and I think it has to do because I really burnish the pigment onto that piece and it was a thin amount and it's not at the tip of my nail where it's like, you know, bumping into everything. So it worked. Alrighty, so this is what it looks like. I went ahead and applied a little bit of cuticle oil already. So I'm just gonna kind of rub that into the skin, into the nail a little bit, underneath the nail, all of that good stuff. I'm so excited about this manicure. Um, it is just about what I wanted with this opal nail art. I actually didn't even know what I wanted. I just wanted something like cute, but not so you know overt or whatnot and you can finish this with a shiny top coat or if you want to be a little interesting you can definitely do matte top coat also look at that hope you enjoy and hope to catch you in the next one check out the description box below for that ring nail art chorus and any other resources we may have for you including promo codes for any of the products that we use today thank you for watching and i'll catch you in the next one Bye bye